Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and in today's video, sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms, we're going to share the test results for Ragnar Prime because, spoiler alert, they are really, really good, and he's not a smite damage commander, and he's not a part of the normal release cycle. Now, I love getting more commanders in the game, but there's a lot we got to talk about in this video, so use the timestamps down below to jump to whichever part you'd like. First, let's review some test results. Is Ragnar Prime good, and who do you pair with? The answer is, spoiler alert, yes, he's good, and it seems like, as predicted, the best pairing is going to be Skippy Prime. Not Quan, okay? Not Sargon, Skippy Prime. And there's a bunch of reasons why that's the case. We'll get there. First and foremost... Let's go to these test results here. Head on over to my favorites, scroll on down, and let's get cooking. In these tests, I used Wallace and Liu Che. We tested an Ark of Osiris practice match. We're using the free trial of Ragnar Prime. He's expertised, but although you can't leave your city with him, you can take him in for a practice match, which is pretty cool. So in this Ark practice match, my punching bag was Wallace with Liu Che. No equipment, okay, no armaments. Formations were switched off, so we're using, like, line formation. <laughs> and you can see here this trade goes very well for the Wallace Liu Cha when we use Ragnar and Skippy. We win by about 10,000 Zevs. Now, I've been saying for a while that, like, you pretty much can't do better in the game, probably, than Wallace and Liu Cha as a combo. This thing just absolutely slaps. We look at the next one, same result, okay? Ragnar, Skippy, 19,000 to 29,000. When we try it the other way, the Skippy primary, interestingly enough, I think this is in part because Skippy is all about skill damage mitigation, we see that you take more Sev Wounds in your army, and the attacker takes less Sev Wounds. So this is not uh, a great result here. It's possible in the field, when you're not up against Smite damage, that the Skippy just does better. But in this limited testing... It looks like the way to run it is with the Ragnar as the primary. It does not surprise me that generating lots of rage would be the way to go, which is what you get from Ragnar in the skill tree. Also, there's some really interesting talent choices. We'll talk about that more in this video. As I continue up here, we tested a Guan with Skippy into the Wallace and Liu chat just to illustrate the power level difference here. And interestingly, Guan and Skippy did about the same in this report as the Ragnar and Skippy. So it's like, wait, hold up. Wait, so is Guan Skippy power level the same as Ragnar and Skippy power level? And the silence is good, but when we ran another report, here is what I think is more representative. And this, by the way, is why I always try to stay away from like, here's one report, it must be reality. <laughs> so yeah, this is a bigger Sev wound difference. And I suspect that the Ragnar with Skippy is just superior, but duels aren't really the way to prove that. We'll talk in a minute about the 3v3s we ran and the 5v5s we ran, but uh, we ran a couple more dual tests just to lock in on combos. We ran a Guan with Ragnar. That did the worst. That was not good. Uh, Cortex tried a Harold Sigurdsson with Ragnar, the old Viking combo. Technically, this is a 3x Viking combo because Cortex is a Viking. And uh, it didn't do great. Not as bad as I would have expected, but eh, it didn't do great. Um, and then I ran a Guan Skippy into a Guan Ragnar just to like kind of see what would do better. And weirdly, it looks like I won <laughs> with the Guan Skippy. I don't know what we're supposed to conclude from that. Uh, uh, Chatsky wanted to run here with a uh, Skippy solo and a Ragnar solo, and the Ragnar won that. Uh, but we uh, got a couple more duels here, and then I'm going to talk about these group test results, okay? So I ran Archers into the Ragnar Skippy, and Ragnar Skippy won by just a little. So Zuge, Herman, defeated. Up next, ran the Cavs. And I mean, bro, good luck beating a Huo Belly. Uh, so we won that, 21,700 to 30,400. Uh, Part of that is that I am Germany now. So I have a troop type advantage there uh, where I have more stats and more base stats. From here, we went back to an infantry combo. Cortex wanted to try Tadek Ibn Ziyad and Sargon 
which did surprisingly well here against the Ragnar Skippy. And then I ran old school cool cavalry, that's Alex and Joan, into the Ragnar Skippy. And we we ate it, man. 33-4 to 25-4. So big seven wound difference there in favor of the Ragnar Skippy. Last but not least, the Ragnar Sargon combo actually crushed the Ragnar Skippy combo. And uh, I think that's just because Sargon is all about that single target damage. And that single target damage is really, really good in a duel. So I guess this didn't turn out terrible, but it's not what I would use in a group fight. Which brings us to group fights. So we did a couple tests with group fights, and I'll show those on the screen here. But we did 3v3, and we did 5v5. And we used the exact same combos. We used the exact same kill sequences. The only difference between what I ran and what Chadski ran is that he had Ragnar and Skippy, I had Guan with Skippy. And the power level boost of going to the Ragnar was very, very noticeable in the group fight. And I think there's a couple reasons why that's the case. First of all, with the Guan silence, it's very hit or miss. If you wreck people with the silence, it's amazing. But Ragnar did two things that were very powerful above and beyond the Guan. First of all, he seemed to live longer. His army seemed to handle taking damage much better and mitigate more of it. The second thing is that his AoE template is a half circle, and that is just insanely powerful. So not only is his gimmick doing big AoE damage, but also he has the half circle template, which lets him actually land that damage every single time on pretty much the max number of targets. So that just really, really stacked up. So there's really no question that the Ragnar could replace the Guan in the Skippy combo. Of course, you could go check out the live stream to see more details around the testing, but now let's talk about some conclusions. What does this mean? Well, here's the thing. When I was asking Wardaddy Chadsky and also Cortex, the infantry investment order, which I think is very important, we of course agreed that Liu Che is still the GOAT. He is the best infantry commander in the game, and many would argue the best commander in the game. Okay, so if Liu Che is the first commander you invest in, would Ragnar maybe be the second commander? And there, it's a toss-up. Either you invest in Wallace with the understanding that if you don't have Alexander the Great yet, right, maybe Wallace holds an important future role and he's amazing now with Liu Che to make arguably the best march or one of the best marches in the game, or you go for the Skippy combo, the Liu Che Skippy combo, which is amazing. Uh, it's the combo that is used in Ark of Osiris League, which I keep making the argument that if it's what's really good in Ark of Osiris League, and it's the one infantry march that those players are using, and they are super motivated to be doing the, the best thing possible, it's probably the best thing possible. So either... Your second investment is this Skippy, or it is potentially Wallace. And then from there, now we're talking about Ragnar Prime being maybe the fourth legendary commander you would invest in in that order. Now, if you think Ragnar is the fourth legendary commander you would invest in in that order, and also you only have two infantry marches then you're in a weird spot. Because as you know from watching my tier lists, if you're subscribed to my channel, when I make an investment tier list, I advise against investing in a commander that is the fourth best for its troop type. Because when new infantry show up in six to nine months from now, the first thing you're going to take out of your lineup is the fourth best commander. Unless there's some new synergy that makes this commander suddenly rise above but that's really risky and it's especially risky because we just don't know what the new infantry are going to do we've had now two cycles where we had smite commanders with infantry are we going to get another cycle i would think yes because there's no smite garrison to go with gorgo and if you're in a kvk with an artifact -hoo -hoo, the attila garrison is insane we all know that so there is a garrison available in a special KVK. We also know that Hera works fine. But would I expect 
the next cycle of infantry to be smite damage? I would assume yes. If that is true, then what does that make the role of Ragnar in the future? I don't know. I really don't. If all future infantry or most future infantry are headed in this direction of being smite. And so if the developers go back and forth from, you know, using different types of formations with commanders, which could be the case, then perhaps he's got a big role in the future. Perhaps there's something that the new commander does that has super big relevance with Ragnar. We just don't know. So in that regard, although Ragnar definitely elevates what you're doing right now, it was undeniable from these test results, I sort of feel like it's a little bit risky if you're light on commander sculptures and your sculpture velocity, in other words, you don't get that many of them, is pretty low, right? If sculpture velocity is low, it's a little bit risky. Now, that said, there is a special role for Ragnar as a secondary for any troop type in the new Viking KVK, which is really cool, but that's just one KVK format, and your kingdom might do other formats. So in that regard, it's a little bit risky. I was kind of surprised that, like, he can't wear the artifact that makes him good for any troop type as a secondary, like, anywhere. Maybe that's just too powerful, because people are saying... Actually, the most busted thing you can do with Ragnar is not pairing with Skippy, but they said it was pairing with Cavalry, which I would believe that when you've got a commander like Huo with a super, super fast rage cycle, that the amount of skill damage you can deal with Ragnar as the secondary is completely busted. So I, in that regard, I definitely get that Ragnar could be insane, and he doesn't even have to be for infantry, but again... That's only in that one KVK, not all the time. So will I personally be maxing Ragnar? Pff, I don't know. I'm going to have to look at my sculptures. We're going to have to look at how you can get more of his sculptures beyond sort of the initial unlock because 690 sculptures into a commander that would soon hit the bench is really, really awkward. And even in Canyon... I think the AoE silence is so powerful, it's hard to say that Ragnar is actually the play, even in Canyon, if you know, that's the thing you really care about a lot. And I uh, both cough from long-form COVID and scoff at that idea because like, it's just not that important in the grand scheme of things. It's just the thing you do every day, which is why it feels more important than it really ought to be, given that that doesn't dictate your... <laughs> loss of resources and speed ups in KVK, right? And that's that's where the open field combos make a big difference. They're a multiplier for your effectiveness. Um, and if you're swarming garrisons, then a multiplier for the uh, dead troops you'll have and the chance to burn the enemy's garrison. So if you were going to invest in Ragnar, you'd have to believe a couple things. First of all, if you use three infantry marchers or more, you get the thumbs up. Go for it. If you believe that we will get more skill damage commanders, go for it. Seems like a great idea. And um, I don't know, what else would have to be true? Oh, yeah, if you have lots of sculptures. <laughs> or if you think you're going to be playing that KVK a lot where you can use them as the secondary, you could maybe do the best. That's hard to say. Now, in terms of talents, this is the build I went with, and I think it's pretty legit. Um, you basically max out the skill tree with feral nature avoid taking naked rage but i did put two points in a latent power you could argue to put a third point into that um the way you do that is you go into the infantry tree you're taking hold the line you're taking strong of body i think it's worth taking the max amount of iron spear and i think you do two points of undying fury i think that's the play you could do two points into iron spear instead but you gotta carve off one point and it's got to come, in my opinion, from over here. I don't think it's the health. I don't think it's this effect. Theoretically, you could do one of those as well. But I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Keep in mind that latent power enhances damage over time effects. That is a debuff applied to the enemy that does damage every turn. And Ragnar does a huge amount of that. Okay. He does 600 factor. Do three targets. 
So that's 1,800 factor of goodness that gets enhanced by latent power. Seems good. <laughs> if you want to see the full live stream with the testing of a card in the end screen over here, you probably do want to just watch that and see us sort of realize as we go and have the same sort of dialogue we're having here, like, oh, this is really interesting. This is this is what I think Ragnar could be. And alternatively, if you want to see my last tier list, I will do an update. Maybe I'll update this card to the newest tier list <laughs> once I've released it. But you can see a card right over here for when I rated heroes in the past and where they landed. And like, maybe I should be bumping Wallace up in that ranking, but where does Ragnar Prime go in that tier list? Maybe that'll be tomorrow's video. Until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies.